Good morning and a happy Thursday morning to you. Uh, God bless you on your day. And as we have our conversation today in our daily devotion, what I'd like to do is talk about temptation. What brings us up is well, the other day at, at Little Church, one of the people that came by to receive communion at the curbside and, and have a little conversation, uh, we were just kind of reflecting kind of in a half joking way about how isn't it ironic that almost everything Jesus teaches is exactly the opposite of what comes naturally to us. And we kind of chuckled about it and also kind of lamented that, you know, so often when you look at the, the purity of Jesus' words, how true they are and how, how we long for them. We know that they're right. We know that they call us to a better way of life than what our instincts do. You know, there's that sad reality that when we weigh ourselves, and I believe it's true for, I know it's true for me, I, I, I believe it's probably true for you, that when you compare your life, your, your heart, your thoughts, your attitude, your actions to the teachings of Jesus, you're going to find yourself like me saying, oh, Lord, I am sorry. I'm not as faithful, as good, as loving, as kind, as generous as you have clearly taught and called me to be. So how do we deal with that? I mean, one way is to just throw up our hands and say, well, I guess I'm a sinner. I'm always going to screw up no matter what. So it's a good thing the Lord loves me and it's a good thing he forgives me. Well, that's that's a good start. But is that where Jesus wants to leave us? Is that the thing that we want to have put on our tombstone at the end of the day was, well, I didn't even bother trying because there was no point, but Jesus loves me. You know, the fact is, I think the Lord calls us to strive to live a life that is faithful. In the Sermon on the Mount, when he makes that declaration, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That doesn't negate his grace but it reminds us that it doesn't negate our responsibility to be faithful in, in pursuing what is right and what is true, striving for it even. You know, the Apostle Paul, who is the champion of that phrase of being saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, also says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's that, how do we respond to this message that we are loved in spite of our sins, that we are forgiven, that we are given heaven as a gift. How do we respond is the question, not whether we are worthy of it, not whether somehow we earn it. So I want to talk to you about temptation today. And I want to start off with 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. It's a verse that has been powerful in my life, both in helping me when I'm facing battles of temptations, it's also been a verse that has convicted me when I have failed in my battles of temptation. Let me read it to you. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to all people. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. You know, isn't it nice to know that when you read that, all tempt, you know, no temptation has seized you except that which is common to all people. Isn't it nice to know that you're not being picked on? That you're, that you're not somehow the defective person among all humanity that has these struggles? The reality is we all struggle and under the wrong circumstances, all of us can be attempted in many ways, in every way, depending on the circumstances, depending on who we are, depending on the influences in our life and our life experience. And to hear that God knows you, he loves you, he knows the battle of temptation, and he's giving the promise he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can endure. But if you want to do what is right, if you want to resist the temptation, he will give you the strength. And that leads me to my, my second scripture passage from Romans 7, verse 7. The Apostle Paul says this, he says, what shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would have not have known what sin was if except for the law. 
For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, do not covet. I love that passage. And again, it's not necessarily the most comforting passage, but it reminds us when we look at ourselves and we weigh our instincts against what the word of God says, we have a choice to make. Do we trust our instinct? Do we go to God and say, well, God, this is what comes naturally to me, so this must be right? Or do we yield our will and our understanding and we say, Lord, your word says that these desires, these instincts within my heart are not right and they're not going to bring good or blessing. But your word actually warns us that when we give in to those impulses and those temptations, we actually bring harm on ourselves and others. That's where the choice begins. That's what's so important in our church today and in our culture to be reminded that there is a truth that is greater than what you think or what I think. There is truth that is absolute and it is universal, speaking to people of every nation, every race, every tribe, and every era of history. It's that truth that doesn't change. And until we understand that, we will never have victory in temptation, because if we think that ultimately we are the ones who decides what's right and wrong and what's true, we are never going to be able to fully battle temptation because we're not even going to recognize that that's actually what's happening right now. I want to end with uh, James chapter four, verses one through six. James asks this question. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasure. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he is jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in you, but he gives us more grace? My goodness, when you read the book of James, that last little verse, verse six, but he gives us more grace. To me, that's what keeps me going. That's what strengthens me in my battle with temptation more than anything else is to know that he loves me, that his grace has covered my sins, past, present, and future. And because of that grace, I want to live my life in a manner that pleases him and honors him. Because of that grace, I want to make my life available to him to use that by some miracle of his spirit, maybe God can use me to speak to other people that they too might come to know the power of his love at work in their lives. So as you reflect a little bit today on temptation and particularly your relationship with temptation, God bless you. God empower you. God speak to you, reminding you both of his love and of his call for your life and what is really right and really good and really true. Amen. God bless you. Bye bye.